So, Stephanie, hey, how are you doing? Everything okay? Everything's good in isolation, thank you. Um, how about you? Um, I know you've been doing some language learning. How's that going? Uh, yeah, it's been pretty good. Uh, yeah, I've been studying a little bit of Italian, following my Spanish shows, you know, things like Casa de Papel, the fourth season came up, but mostly been trying to work on Italian with uh, Learn Language with Netflix and Duolingo, stuff like that. Nice. I need to brush up on my Italian and Spanish, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. I'm a bit rusty, a bit rusty. It's, it's one of those things, it, like a bicycle, you know, you never, you never, you never lose it if you, once you've, once you've reached a point, but definitely you you can get rusty. Uh, so yeah, because both of us uh, speak, I can say I speak at least a little bit of uh, Italian uh, mm-hmm. after living there for a year, and and I'm more confident with my Spanish. But um, I knew. Okay, for me it's the other way around because I learned Italian for much longer. But yes, yeah, still I haven't spoken either of them in in quite a while. I haven't needed to. So um, I suppose like a lot of our students, um, I feel like I need to do a bit of speaking practice. Yep. Well, um, speaking is the best thing we can do. I think, mm-hmm. uh, it, like speaking, listening, of course, uh, but speaking that is the the fundamental, right? If you're learning a language. Yeah, definitely. Have you ever had um language lessons, kind of in a classroom, like our students do, or one to one? No, and I, I wish, I wish, I, I wish I had. I plan to at some point once I sort, of, I, mm. I, I, I realize my level. I hadn't had any any formal lessons. Um, just mm-hmm. Duolingo and and practicing out on the street live live practice yeah. um yeah no and I definitely feel comfortable I can say everything that I want to just maybe mm-hmm. not as quickly as I would like mm. um I know that some of my students my some of my Korean students have the same problem where they have the idea in their head and with a bit of time they can formulate their idea in in English it's the same for me with Italian but um I usually tell them just to go and just throw yourself in and just try to try to get words out yeah yeah I think if you just um just go for it sometimes and don't worry about making so many mistakes you know yeah because obviously you know when you make mistakes you learn from them don't you especially if you remember the moment you made that mistake um in that foreign language um for example i remember once being in um in spain i think it was actually valencia which is where you live yeah right, right. valencia sí. yeah. me encanta <laughs> i was in um, a restaurant over there with my family and um we ordered well we had some bread on the table and in Spain, they don't um, give you bread and butter like we do in England. Mm. Um, they just, I think they just eat bread without butter. A, in a, a little you know. bit of olive oil, maybe, yeah. Yeah, maybe olive oil, that's it. Um, and I wanted some butter. Um, so I, I had no idea what the word for butter was in Spanish. So I tried in Italian thinking, oh, you know, it must be similar because they're both Latin based languages. Um, so I asked for some burro, which is um, Italian for butter, and the waiter looked very confused. Yeah, because burro in Spanish means donkey. He must have thought I was very hungry. Yeah, <laughs> bit of donkey with my bread, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, in Spanish it's mantequilla. No idea where it came from, why, why that, because burro could sound like butter. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's one of those things you have to go and make mistakes. Don't feel embarrassed. I think um, mm. it's it's part of learning. In Italian, they have a nice saying. Um, it's uh, spagliando se imparare, and it means to mm-hmm. kind of like to mess up is to learn, or messing up is, yeah. is learning. Yeah. Very true. You see, I'll never I'll never forget the word for butter in Spanish now. That's it. Um, yeah. Do you think there is a slight difference in how? We as Europeans learn, especially other European languages, um, Mm. and maybe how some of our Korean students learn, for example, English or, I don't know, French or, yeah, do you feel that there's a difference? There could be a difference, yeah. I mean, when when I was at school, um, I did learn German and Italian as well, Um, and I remember doing quite a lot of um listening activities reading but also some some speaking in the classroom um but from teaching um my students at britsent i've i've noticed that they say they they don't get much speaking practice in the classroom okay um in korea i don't know what your experience has been of this what what do you think um yes i i mean i've found that my korean students their grammar is fantastic um they're like and and their their work ethic is is amazing like they Mm -hmm. 
they they love homework <laughs> well <laughs> many of them yeah. not all of them they everybody's busy but um but like the, the, the see the value of 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 studying outside of mm. outside of lesson yes it, definitely. it's important to keep refreshed and and my korean students definitely um definitely see that yes i remember when i first started teaching like generally and um i was always surprised when students said that they wanted homework because for me when i was at school let's say homework was something nobody wanted to do but i totally understand the the need to do homework and now that i am a teacher i've been teaching so long i i definitely think that homework is important to improve as much as possible well yeah i uh, i think because you know especially something like language it's it's mm-hmm. it's it's so active it's so live it needs to stay yeah. it needs to stay in your uh, in your head it needs to stay like there fresh at the at mm. the front of your mind um otherwise it can become rusty like you said um so yeah. the more you practice uh the more the more often you practice uh mm-hmm. the 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 more it stays front and center in your definitely uh, in in your thoughts yeah, yeah definitely. um and yeah practice makes perfect doesn't it yeah definitely are there any languages other languages rather that you are interested in or would like to learn well i mean i i since since starting working uh uh, at Britain, I have obviously become quite interested in Korean. I'm a little bit scared, mm. a bit intimidated because it's 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 completely different. Yeah. Um, I I have thought about maybe go maybe French because the two mm-hmm. the two Latin languages that I have already it could be it could be a, a useful one to 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 try to get into. Yeah. I know what you mean about that because yeah, like learning Italian. I learned Italian first and then and then started with Spanish. I've also done a bit of Portuguese and they're all kind of, you know, similar in in some ways, you know, Latin based languages. Um, and I've never tried to attempt um, any other sorts of languages, never tried an Asian language. So I think I've taken the easy route so far. Do you know what I mean? Um, I, 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 I do. I do. I do know what you mean. It's still something. It's still something uh great and it does it it reshapes your mind a little bit Mm. um but yeah learning a brand new alphabet even even a european one like i i i tried a bit of greek just learning a a new alphabet was quite intimidating for me Mm. definitely helped having the same letters yeah and being able to see some similarities in those things Mm -hmm. um with your experience of european learners how would you how would you describe them i suppose it might make a difference as to where they're from in Europe, right? Definitely, yeah. Um, well, I would say that um, generally, obviously we're generalising here, but um, from what I've noticed, a lot of the Italian students or French or Spanish, they don't really seem to have much of a problem speaking in the classroom. Um, you know, they like to express their views, you know. Yeah. Um, whilst, for example, I've taught quite a lot of like Japanese students, um and korean as well and they seem to be a little quieter especially if they're in a group situation um one-to-one maybe it's a bit different yeah i think what i've found um with some of my korean students is one of the challenges for me with teaching them is 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 reminding them how how well they actually speak already um oh yeah they have such a great understanding of english as a language and one of my jobs is to try to reassure them that actually you speak so well don't worry and we start practicing getting vocalizing the language that they know whereas one of the tricks of teaching italians and spanish students sometimes is getting them to shut up yeah totally because they might not have nearly as much um actual understanding of the language but they're going to try and use whatever they can both things are very admirable and it would be great to find a balance of the two yeah um something i have noticed um from working at britsend and teaching uh, my korean students is that when they do their kind of um they fill in the form saying what they would like to learn in english and that sort of thing one of the questions they're asked is um what is your level of english and um i've noticed you know from looking at those that sometimes the students will say that they are a beginner for example and then when i actually meet them and we start talking they're more like an intermediate or upper intermediate level yeah <laughs> so it kind of makes me feel like maybe they're very um well it seems like they're very modest 
Yep, very, very, very modest. I would say to the point where they actually they're selling themselves short a little bit, right? They uh, they should be more confident about uh, their ability because uh, well, a lot of my students are are fantastic. Yeah, totally. I I have the same experience. That's right. Um, I don't know. For me, it can change a lot. It, it's, it all depends on your confidence, right? So, I mean, yeah. if, if you're speaking with somebody that you're very familiar with um, or about mm-hmm. or about a subject that's very familiar, then it can be quite easy um, to, to, for me at least, with, uh, with Spanish and with Italian, to, to really get into a flow, into a conversation and to start feeling very comfortable. And then other times I remember I went back to Rome uh, in December and you know I, I had just been living there for a year um, and I was very confident with my Italian before I'd left. But as soon as I sat, like stepped foot in, in the airport back in Rome, I started feeling nervous. I didn't want somebody to come and speak to me in, in Italian. I was worried I was worried that I was going to make mistakes. You know the feeling. Yeah, a, a full day to, to start feeling, mm-hmm. you know, confident using the language again with everybody. Yeah. Yes, I I, um, I went to Rome actually myself like a few years ago um, and I decided to take two weeks holiday over there and, and go to a language school. Um, and I was in a classroom um, with some others, um, not not many people, just like four of us, I think. Um, and I was learning Italian for about four hours a day and then going back to my accommodation, which I was sharing with Italians and chatting to them. And it was great to speak to native speakers all day long. But my goodness, at the end of the day, I was so tired. It was like so draining. I felt like it was so draining to have to constantly think in another language do you know what i mean oh yeah absolutely I, it's it can be exhausting and actually that that is when i think you really start to get into your fluency is when you, you, you oh yeah but it does take a long time mm. yeah i had the exact same feeling even when i was living in valencia i i still had the opportunity at times maybe to speak to somebody there was one pub where i'd watch the football i would go to an irish bar because i could watch english football for example okay. uh, i would i would have an opportunity maybe in my day or you know a few days a week where i could just practice english or i was living there with my ex-girlfriend who was spanish mm-hmm. but her english was quite good so at some points in the day i would just say can, can we speak english for a bit please but um and but i remember the last month i moved from valencia to the hometown of of my uh girlfriend at the time and nobody spoke any english there so all day it was just mm. non-stop spanish and it mm. was it was exhausting it's intense isn't it really yeah. draining yeah yeah as you say it's a really good way to improve um your your language like living in a in a, in a place where they speak that language um is the best way, I yeah, think. And, and, um, and nothing else, when there is no option. Yeah, you're kind of thrown in at the deep end, if you yeah, know what I mean. Absolutely. You have to... Yeah, that's it. You sink, sink or swim, you know? You either, you either swim or you sink. But yeah. yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. Um, but it's interesting because when I, when I went back to London, like after having been in Rome for a few weeks, you know, speaking Italian all the time, um, obviously I didn't speak much Italian here in London. Um, but when um, some friends of mine from Italy came to London to visit me, obviously I was expecting to speak to them in Italian. Um, but I almost froze. I kind of because I wasn't in their country where Italian is, you know, necessary. Mm. I kind of felt like, oh, no, maybe I should speak to them only in English now. <laughs> well, yeah, that can be a problem as well, um, especially in, in Europe. It might be less so for our our like our Korean listeners that but when often if you go to a country in Europe and you're practicing a European language, the people that you are speaking to, if they realize that you're English, they they will try to practice their English with you. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. You're both trying to do the same thing. Um, I'm sure if I were if I were OK at uh, Korean and I went to Korea to try to practice my Korean, there'd be many people maybe some brit sent listeners practicing their english with me so yeah um it's a funny thing sometimes you can speak to somebody in italian they'll be speaking to you in english it should be the other way around but um yes totally i must say that people do appreciate it though if you try to speak in their language first even if you're not very good um it's you know being on holiday um whenever i whenever i go on holiday i always try to learn a few phrases 
from that country um, and try to use them. And I think that most locals kind of, you know, appreciate the fact that you're trying, even if you're getting it all wrong. Oh, yeah. I, I think please, thank you and sorry. <laughs> a very, <laughs> a very, very important one. And I also learn the word help just in case. Ah, yeah. That's a nice, yeah, yeah, yeah. You never know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, I, I think... I don't know. Have you ever taught any anyone any learners from from further north in Europe? In the north of Europe, we maybe have uh, we have culturally a kind of a, a difference, right, from the south. In the south, they're considered to be quite loud, quite outspoken, quite warm. I mean, very I means different way of showing warmth, I suppose. Yeah. Um, but very yeah. E- expressionate, and like we said before getting them to be quiet is is the is the hardest part actually of, of teaching them there is an idea at least in europe that the further north you go the more maybe reserved the more um quietly thoughtful i suppose um, yeah. that you become yeah i've noticed that with uh, teaching kind of um i've taught a lot of german students um swiss as well yeah in comparison to for example somebody from sicily or southern italy yeah um yeah they're, they're much quieter, more reserved. Um, that doesn't mean that they're not friendly. Like they, they, they are friendly and, and nice people. But um, yeah, their, their style is completely different, I would say. Yes. And, and even, even between southern European countries like Spain or Italy, in the north of Spain or the north of Italy, they are, more, they are slightly more reserved, slightly more in that way. In the south of Spain and the south of Italy, they, it's very melodramatic, arms everywhere when they're saying stuff, you know. It's actually quite interesting because in a lot of those countries, so the nor- like northerners, let's say, are considered to be, as you said, like more reserved um, and people in the south are warmer. But what about in the UK? Yeah, I, I know where you're going with this. I would say it's completely the other way around, um, in the, yeah. especially the southeast of, of the UK. We're, we're considered slightly more, I suppose, slightly more reserved. Served. um maybe money plays a role in it as well economically it's 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 yeah. uh, in the south there is a bit more money but but up in the north the idea is yeah that like a bit maybe a bit louder a bit strong sort of community feel you know my family are from ireland and from the north my dad's from manchester so i i see the comparison quite quite well actually yeah yeah that's it a lot of students are quite surprised when i tell them that it's actually the opposite in in england um that we kind of see people who live up north as we say um to be a bit more kind of open you know a bit more friendly and then people from the south perhaps less so a bit more reserved you know keep keep to themselves yeah there is a yeah people from the north when they come down to london they're very they say that they're very surprised because they when they're on public transport nobody speaks to each other it's true i don't believe this but they they feel like you're not even supposed to look people in the eye on a, on, on the mm. train whereas in in the north people will ask you how your day's going or if you're eating mm. something they might say oh that looks nice or something like that someone said that to me in london i'd be shocked yeah <laughs> Like, why are you looking at my food? Yeah. <laughs> I'm probably one of those people who kind of, you know, sees a bunch of um, non-Londoners getting on the tube, all kind of chatting away and yeah. being all friendly, you know, and, and, and I just think, you're not from London, are you? I can tell. <laughs> you, you have acclimatised. <laughs> But it is a fantastic thing. I think when you obviously people who are interested in the idea of different cultures, that is that is one thing. And probably there is no sort of starker uh, a way to define cultures, I suppose, than through than through language. Sometimes mm-hmm. you can see similarities. Sometimes you see very big differences. Um, mm-hmm. We have an expression, for example, um, in English, uh, which is you've made your bed now lie in it, which means you've created the situation that maybe it might be a problem for you. And now you have to deal with or handle the responsibility or the, the consequences. And I know the one in Italy is really nice. It's uh, they say, volevi la bicicletta, allora pedala, which is like you wanted the bicycle, now ride it. You know, another beautiful expression. Uh, yeah. Saying the same thing. But mm. um, so to see culture through words is a fantastic thing that I'm sure some of our students have found as well, because lots of them are keen to learn about expressions and things like that. Definitely. Yeah. I think that when you do learn another language, um, you don't only learn, you know, the language itself, but there's so much more behind it. There's there's the culture of music, the culture of food, you know, learning the words of a language. Um, you can you can learn so much more, so much more. And you can learn 
what is important to that culture but may not be as important in your own culture yep i agree uh yeah that's it you you work out uh, the differences you work out any similarities it's a fantastic way it's similar to what we what we said um once before that um we have a lot of words for rain for example in england um because of course you know rain and weather is is a big part of our culture when you make small talk with someone you always talk about the weather yeah well perhaps in other countries where you know maybe the weather isn't such a big thing because it's kind of constant or i don't know for example in thailand they have the rainy season and the sun the sunny season so that's it yeah so perhaps for them maybe they don't have as many words for weather as, as we do yep yep or like from our first podcast you know getting pissed or those kinds of things we have we we have that relationship with with maybe drinks um in definitely in italy everything is a, is about your relationship with food uh, in yeah. in spain they have i mean a lot of things is uh, based around bread they just love bread in spain so mm. a lot of their expressions are are about bread you know you can see the the important what what's important to that culture just from the language which is really interesting i think yeah Oh, it's a fantastic thing. So are you going to be doing any more studying today? Do you think you've got some, some time later on? Oh, absolutely. I have some time in the afternoon. I'll, I'll be, I think I'm going to go straight in for, for Italian and just, and hit it hard. What I, what I like to do is think, what would I, what do I need to say? What do I want to learn to say? What is important when I teach my Korean students, like the grammar that is useful to learn? Yeah. I want to try to say that in Italian. So I'll write down how to say it, how to say he does it, she does it, I mm-hmm. I do it, etc. And yeah. and just to have a have a goal, practice yeah. it, write it down, maybe make a, a little picture like a a diagram yeah. and then practice it until it's in my head nice what about you um well i'm going to be teaching quite a lot today so i'm not sure i'll have time um but maybe i'll listen to some italian music later on for example that's a good way of you know um learning the language as well and it's quite relaxing to could put it on whilst i'm cooking dinner or something like that music is a, is a fantastic uh fantastic way to learn and just a fantastic way to yeah in a relaxing manner you know yeah we were talking last night you would you you had a, a, a fantastic uh idiom i think it was shakespeare who said it right oh yeah of course Oh, yes. If music be the language of love, play on. Gorgeous. If music be the language of love, play on. <laughs> I like it. Mm. Well, I better get on um, with my lesson preparations, as I'm sure yep. you need to as well. So for now, arrivederci. Arrivederci. Ci parliamo molto presto. Okay, we see, we speak to each other very soon. Okay, um, yeah. and yeah, guys, if you ever have, if you have any questions about culture, about th- we know more about Italian, Spanish, we could talk. Um, any questions, you can leave them in the comments, and, uh, and yeah. we'll do our best to get back to you. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll see you soon. Okay. Ci vediamo. Ciao. Ciao. Bye. <laughs>